CBSE Physics Class 12 NCRT Solutions on Current Electricity Chapter Exercise 3.4 I will read out the question Two subdivisions are there Subdivision A 3 resistors 2 ohm, 4 ohm and 5 ohm are combined in parallel What is the total resistance of the combination? Total resistance here means effective resistance. Then subdivision B, if the combination is connected to a battery of EMF 20 volt, and negligible internal resistance, determine the current through each resistor and the total current drawn from the battery. Okay, now we can do the sum in two different ways. This is a circuit diagram, 3 resistors, 2 ohm, 4 ohm, 5 ohm in parallel, connected to a battery of voltage 20 volt. Uh, you are supposed to find effective resistance and current through each resistance. You see the resistances are connected in parallel. So formula for the combination of resistances in parallel, 1 by R is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 etc. So here it is. 1 by R is equal to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5 20 as the LCM 10 plus 5 plus 4 19 by 20 1 by R which gives you R is equal to 20 by 19 ohm effective resistance is 20 by 19 ohm then you are supposed to find current through each branch See, this you can do in two ways. First, you assume uh, the voltage across this, 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 all the resistors voltage across them is same and equal to the battery voltage because they are all connected in parallel. So, if you call this as I1, I2 and I3, I1 will be V by R1, that is voltage across this, which will be same as the voltage here. So, 20 by R1 is 2. So, 10 ampere. I1 would be 10 ampere. Similarly, if you want to find I2, V by R2, 20 by 4, 5 ampere. I3, V by R3, what is V? 20. What is R3? 5. 4 ampere. So, current through each resistor 10 ampere, 5 ampere and 4 ampere. Total current is asked. So, add 15 plus 19 ampere is the total current. Total current can also be found by I is equal, I is equal to V by R effective. V 20, R effective 20 by 19. So, 19 ampere. So, you can cross check whether your answers are right or wrong. This is one way. Then there is another way also. What you can do, you know total current. First to find the effective resistance. Find the current drawn from the battery, which only we got as 19 ampere. Now, if you want to find out the current in each branch. So, 19 ampere current is coming here. How did you get that 19 ampere? V by R effective. What is V? 20. What is R effective? They are all connected in parallel. R effective came to be say around 20 by 19 ohm. So V by R effective. 20 by 20 by 19. So 19 ampere current is coming. Now this 19 ampere <coughs> will go in these three branches. Note that when the voltage is constant, because in parallel combination, current is inversely proportional to resistance, total current, it divided in the reciprocal ratio of resistances. So what is the direct ratio? 2 is to 4 is to 5. What is the reciprocal ratio? 1, is to 1 by 2 is to 1 by 4 is to 1 by 5. Uh, this will be 10 is to multiply by 20. 
this will be 10 is to 5 is to 4 so this 19 ampere should be divided in the ratio of 10 is to 5 is to 4 so i1 will be total current 10 by 10 in 10 plus 5 plus 4 19 so 10 ampere that is total current should be divided in the reciprocal ratio of resistances reciprocal ratio of resistances will be 1 by 2 is to 1 by 4 is to 1 by 5 why because direct ratio of the resistances are 2 is to 4 is to 5 now 1 by 2 is to 1 by 4 is to 1 by 5 is same as 10 is to 5 is to 9 19 should be divided in this ratio so 19 into 10 by 19 for i1 i2 19 into 5 by 19 5 ampere similarly i3 19 into 4 by 19 4 ampere total current of course we already found 19 ampere okay whichever this method is useful in some places but here also you can use as an alternative method whichever is easier you can follow thank you now question number 3.5 at room temperature 27 degree c the resistance of a heating element is 100 ohm what is the temperature of the element if the resistance is found to be 117 ohm given that the temperature coefficient of the material of the resistor is 1.7 into 10 to the power of minus 4 per degree celsius okay that means uh, some resistor is heated there will be increase in resistance when uh, the temperature increases use this formula r2 is equal to r1 into 1 plus alpha t2 minus t1 t1 initial temperature T2 after the temperature after the heating R1 initial resistance R2 final resistance alpha temperature coefficient of resistance direct application of the formula everything else is given excepting this T2 which you are supposed to find now we will see how to do this alpha uh, you are supposed to find T2 no so R2 by R1 minus 1 into 1 by alpha plus t1 this only is your t2 on simplification or eliminating for t2 you get this so 1 by alpha 1 by 1.7 into 10 to the power of minus 4 note that the unit is per degree celsius so you don't have to convert it into per degree or per kelvin even if you convert per kelvin it will remain same only that add, adding 273, subtracting 273, all those kinds of these things are not required here because this per degree Celsius here represents change in temperature. Therefore, if you want to represent change in temperature in Celsius or in Kelvin, the, the value will be same. So, you can even take it as 1.7 into 10 to the power of minus 4 per Kelvin instead of 1.7 into 10 power minus 4 per degree Celsius because they are same whether you express in per kelvin per degree celsius because it is temperature difference okay now 1 by 1 1.7 10 to the power of minus 4 r2 by r1 100 r2 117 by 100 minus 1 plus initial temperature is 27 simplify this so this is 1.17 minus 1 so 0 0.17 by 1.7 into 10 to the power of minus 4 plus 27 now this will be 10 10 power minus 3 go to the numerator it will be 10 power 3 which is 1000 so 1027 degree celsius that is the final temperature understood that 